Hello everyone. Today we've got a further pure mathematics GCE O level past paper. It's a bit different to my usual the usual past papers that I'm doing for sure. Um, this largely focuses on now the GCE, which was a qualification or it's a group of qualifications that used to exist in the UK and it concerns things basically before 2010, 2011-ish was when the GCE O levels were phased out and replaced with GCSEs. They both served the same purpose, but GCSEs were like the new generation of that. This, this as a bit of history, was um, the grading was the same, but you can consider it the start of the A star to G era, and we're now just coming to the close of the A star to G era with the new 9 to 1 qualifications like for the pure maths is today. So, um, this question is going to be a quadratic equation question that is strongly based on the sum and product of roots theorems. Um, they're also called Vieta's formulae relevant to the quadratic equation, but you don't need to know it by this name because um, it's not particularly... I mean, if, obviously it's useful, but it's not something that people usually um, make a fuss about call, calling the wrong thing because sum and root formulae uh, make sense as a logical name for it. So just to refresh you guys, the sum and root formulae for a quadratic equation, given that a quadratic equation fx can be expressed in the form, and this applies to pretty much any quadratic equation, fx is equal to k times x minus alpha x minus beta. This is just about quadratic equations. If we had a higher degree polynomial, so starting with a higher power here, then it would go on, it would be like x minus gamma, x minus delta, etc. Um, but that's that's not the case here, it's just a quadratic equation, so we have it in the form k times x minus alpha, x minus beta, where alpha and beta are the roots of the quadratic equation, and the roots of any polynomial are the x values where fx is equal to zero. So on the graph, just to refresh you guys, that would mean that for a quadratic equation like this, the x value at this point would be a root, and the x value at this point would be a root. Okay, so the formula basically stated that the product of the two roots, alpha beta, is equal to um, just thinking this through here, it's equal to c over a, where c is the constant term, the x to the zero term in the equation, and a is the x squared coefficient in the equation. So alpha beta is c over a, and alpha plus beta is minus b over a. And we're just going to go and tr go ahead and try and prove that. So given we know that fx is equal to k times x minus alpha and x minus beta. And if you're wondering about why I say this is true for all quadratic equations, even though some are not solvable into alpha and beta, well, that's because um, alpha and beta might sometimes be complex numbers, which involve what happens when you take the square root of a negative number. But that's not covered in ITCSE, though for interest, it basically means that you'd get something like k x minus 2 plus 3i x plus 2 or x minus 2 minus 3i and the special relationship here where i is the square root of negative 1 you can skip ahead if you're not interested in this because it's not relevant to the question really but if i is the square root of negative 1 then your quadratic equations will still factor out into this form because this is one root and this is the other root. 
So still holds true, even if it appears to be an equation with no real solutions. So let's just undo that drawing for the time being. And we have fx is equal to k times x minus alpha, x minus beta. All right, so if we expand this out, we get it's k times x squared minus alpha x minus beta x plus alpha beta. And it would be lovely if you could follow along with me while I'm doing this. And then factorizing positive x out of this pair of terms here, we get k times x squared plus, and this plus is so that it's clearer what we're actually dealing with, plus minus alpha minus beta x plus alpha beta. And finally, um, multiplying the k into these three terms in the bracket, we get fx is equal to kx squared plus k minus alpha minus beta x plus k alpha beta. And given that this is equal to our quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c, where this term and this term must therefore be equal, these, these terms must therefore be equal, we find that because a is k, and a is sort of like the scaling factor, the vertical scaling factor of the whole equation. b is this number, and c is this number. We can figure out that um, if we want alpha plus beta, for instance, given that b is equal to, well, a being k, let's just write a here. b is equal to a minus alpha minus beta. And so taking out minus 1 from both sides gets us negative b is equal to a alpha plus beta. And dividing both sides by a, the first coefficient of the quadratic equation, we get alpha plus beta is equal to uh, minus b over a. And similarly, we do the same thing with this knowledge here, that a alpha beta is equal to c c is equal to a alpha beta, and dividing both sides by a, we get alpha beta is equal to c over a, where, of course, alpha beta is the product of our two roots or solutions to the quadratic equation, and c and a are our constant term, our x to the power of 0 term at the end, and our x squared term, respectively. So. What happens now? Well, this and this are two things that we will definitely know the values of simply because we have the knowledge that the coefficient here is 1, the coefficient here is minus 7, and the coefficient here is positive 3. And in doing that, we can get raw values for alpha plus beta and alpha beta. So what, what do we do now? Well. We've established these two pieces of background information. What we're going to aim to do, given that the question re explicitly requires us not to um, do anything sort of involving actually solving the equation, We'll need to figure out this value, alpha squared plus 1 beta times beta squared plus 1, without finding the value of alpha or beta independently. If you find the value of alpha or beta at any stage, it's, it's cheating because you have to technically solve the equation to do that. So I'm just uh, clearing everything for the time being. I'm going to put the question back. 
All right, so let's get started with actually solving this question. For part A, we need to find the value of alpha squared plus 1, beta squared plus 1. The thing I like about these questions is that oftentimes um, the sort of creativity required in manipulating the expressions they give you like this into the form such that they can be found out with only the information about alpha plus beta and alpha beta. That kind of creativity is what I think makes these questions one of the most fun kinds of questions that you can get on a for the pure paper. So as far as quadratic equations go, um, a lot of the topic can seem pretty dull compared to the rest of the syllabus, but this is definitely one of the f fun parts, one of the highlights of the course uh, for me when I was doing it how many years ago now? One or two years ago. So, expanding this pair of brackets out, um, we'll get alpha squared, beta squared, plus beta squared, plus alpha squared, plus 1. And one trick that I like to use here is, well, we already know that alpha squared, beta squared is going to be alpha, beta squared. So that term's safe, and we know that 1 is 1, so that term's safe. And by safe here, I'm just referring to the fact that we can easily calculate it directly from one of these values. And finally, alpha squared plus beta squared is uh, a friend you're going to have to get familiar with, because the shortcut for this, the intuition for this, actually stems out from first squaring alpha plus beta, if you take this squared, pause the video, square this, and see if you can figure out what to do from there. So, now that I'm assuming you've unpaused to find out, alpha plus beta squared is equal to alpha squared plus 2 alpha beta plus beta squared. So, that means, given that we already have the two terms we want here on this right-hand side, and this is a term we know already because it's in terms of alpha beta, we work this down basically to alpha plus beta squared minus 2 alpha beta is equal to alpha squared plus beta squared. So in the end we're rewriting the original expression we got like this. Alpha beta squared, our first term, plus alpha plus beta squared minus 2 alpha beta, our middle two terms rephrased in terms of the sum of the roots and the product of the roots, and finally plus 1. So to find numerical values for this, alpha beta is equal to c over a, of course. So in our quadratic equation that we're dealing with here, um, c is positive 3 and a is 1. So c, the constant term, 3, divided by 1, the coefficient of the x squared term, is going to be positive 3. That's our value of alpha beta. And alpha plus beta being negative b over a, well, if you look back to the equation, it was x squared minus 7x plus 3 as our function. So minus b is minus minus 7, b being the coefficient of the x to the power of 1 term. So this is positive 7 divided by a, which we know is positive 1, which makes alpha plus beta equal to positive 7. And this is not a plus sign, this is meant to be a 1. So substituting in these values that we've calculated about the product and the sum of the roots in this quadratic equation, we get 3 squared plus, well, alpha plus beta is 7, so 7 squared minus 2 alpha beta, well, alpha beta is 3, so it's minus 2 times 3, plus 1. or bringing this into just standard numbers, 9 plus 49 minus 6 plus 1, which is 53. So that's your answer. And now we move on to the second part of the question, where we need to form an equation with the roots alpha over alpha squared plus 1 and beta over beta squared plus 1. Now the thing is, you are not allowed to um, sort of 
solve the equation. You remember, without solving the equation, this instruction is in the top of the question. So they expect you to follow this limitation throughout your entire problem-solving process. So we can, the only thing we can do first to form an equation with these roots is, well, let's, let's take a look at this. Um, we know that fx is going to be some x minus a times x minus b. The k from earlier is going to be set to 1 for convenience, or it might be set to another number later to make the numbers nicer to play with. So we know that a is equal to this value here, alpha over alpha squared plus 1, b is equal to this value here, beta over beta squared plus 1. It doesn't matter that alpha is the left hand one, that a is the left hand one and b is the right hand one, because it's just an arbitrary choice of what root we're going to use. And by the way, just just to make the intuition abundantly and explicitly clear about this, the reason that we write polynomials out in this notation, like x minus x0, x minus x1, x minus x2, whatever, is because if f of k makes the polynomial 0, this is as a direct result of the fact that if x minus k is a factor, then you get k minus k, or 0 being a factor of the entire polynomial when you factorized it out. The fact that you can break down a polynomial into these units instead of the units of like a x to the power of b, these units of um, x minus a root are kind of, they're more fundamental, they're more beautiful, they're more important to the composition of a polynomial function, I would say, than the original um, ax something plus bx something plus cx something and so on. Because these actually define something about the polynomial, which is the solutions. And the fact that converting between um, power form, like ax squared plus bx plus c, converting from this form to this form is such a focused upon aspect of math in school, um, should tell you a little something about the importance of this. The fact that you can convert polynomials from this form to this form and back is called the fundamental theorem of algebra and is very, very likely something you're going to cover in your future mathematical studies. So in that case, pretty excited for you. So I'm just uh, deleting, deleting here. Right, let's get back on with the question. So we have our fx is equal to x minus a times x minus b. So firstly, um, let's substitute in our alpha and beta terms so that we can get the full picture. fx is equal to x minus alpha over alpha squared plus 1 times x minus beta over beta squared plus 1. And this, is, this would have been the equation that you see in the thumbnail. Now let's try and multiply it out. Well, for the x squared term, it's just x squared because there is nothing attached to the two x's. They both have a coefficient of 1. And then in the middle, we have minus alpha over alpha squared plus 1 plus uh, beta over beta squared plus 1 x because it's minus ax minus bx which is what we get when we ex expand these brackets and finally the end result the plus a constant this ab becomes plus alpha beta over alpha squared plus 1 beta squared plus 1 and 
you may notice that this is in fact the this denominator here is the expression we had to work out the value of in the previous question. So the knowledge that it's 53 is going to help us. All right. So what I think we're going to have to focus on at the moment is converting this into a form that we can calculate from our knowledge of the product of the roots alpha beta and the sum of the roots alpha plus beta. We can first try to multiply both sides out. So let's let's multiply the fractions together. So multiplying the left side fraction by b squared plus 1 over b squared plus 1, which is equal to 1, we get alpha b squared plus 1 over alpha squared plus 1 beta squared plus 1. I keep calling it b, sorry, that's my bad. Plus, and multiplying the right-hand fraction by the left-hand denominator of the left-hand denominator, uh, beta times alpha squared plus 1 over alpha squared plus 1 beta squared plus 1. We can try and sum together the tops to get alpha times beta squared plus 1 plus beta times alpha squared plus 1 over this. And expanding the top further, we get this down to alpha beta squared plus alpha plus beta alpha squared plus beta over alpha squared plus 1 beta squared plus 1. Well, we know that the bottom is 53, so I'm not, we're not, we're not going to keep writing that out. Let's work with the numerator here and see what we can reduce it down to. I'm going to group the terms with more powers together for convenience and for visualizing better. So alpha beta squared plus alpha squared beta plus alpha plus beta. Well, would you look at that? This already comes out as its own term. It's the sum of the roots. And this here, you can see that alpha beta factorizes out of this to get beta plus alpha again. So that's, that's pretty cool overall, I'd say. So it's that over what we already know is 53. Given our knowledge that beta plus alpha is equal to positive 7, if I recall correctly, yes, it's positive 7 and positive 3 are our key numbers, this becomes 3 times 7 plus 7 over 53, or 28 over 53. So that's one term for it, basically. That's, that's, the, that's the inside of these brackets is 28 over 53. Remember, we're going to have to add a negative sign in later. And if we work with this fraction for a moment, we find that its alpha beta is 3, and the denominator is 53 as a direct result of what we worked out in part A. So overall, the answer to our question is fx, our quadratic function, is equal to x squared, which is an arbitrary choice of the coefficient 1, just to make things convenient, minus 28 over 53 x, and then plus this constant term, a times b, 3 over 53. And that's our final answer. So to sum up the process of this problem solving, you want to know that the quadratic function can always be broken down into, into this, this set of constituent parts, where each linear factor determines one root of the equation. And you can algebraically manipulate these parts until you get to a situation where everything is in terms of alpha plus beta and alpha beta, because these are two values that you know, and substituting in real numerical values for these does not contradict the requirements of the question, because you're not technically solving the equation. If at any moment you work out alpha or work out beta separately, that's cheating. So, 
you were restricted to playing with alpha beta and alpha plus beta, which is a fun kind of mental challenge that makes these questions probably one of the most interesting for me at least uh, in this kind of paper. There is an extension of this formula, of these formulas about um, roots and stuff that extend um, to polynomials with a higher starting exponent. If you're interested, do leave a comment. If you have any questions, leave a comment. And if you have a suggestion for a video, leave a comment or email me at watchmedomath at gmail.com. If this video helps you, please subscribe. There are new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 6 p.m. Hong Kong time or 10 p.m. Universal Coordinated Time. Thank you for watching.